Well, you know, uh, and that leads me into your old employer, the UFC. Uh, obviously, since the last time we've spoken, uh, you have uh, have been cut by the promotion, even though you went 6-2 and two as a lightweight. And I think the only person that had that many wins in the lightweight division over the past few years was uh, the champion, Ben Henderson. So uh, were you shocked when they decided to drop the hammer on you? Yes. Yeah, I was shocked. I, I did not see that coming, even though I let the press know that other on to think that I thought it was coming. Yeah. If I lost, but I honestly didn't feel it was coming. I was just trying to get more press by saying it, it, it's a possibility. So why do you think that happened then, given the fact that you were 6-2 and two over the past couple of years in the division? Well, if you look at all the guys, well, obviously the strike force merger, they had too many fighters. That was the main reason Joe Silva gave me, is because they had 120 too many fighters, which is a bunch of crap. You didn't have to buy strike force. If, if you're going to try to take away from the fighters, by, by uh, bullying out the competition, you don't have to do that. You can pay the fighters more. Uh, it, it frustrates me the way it, it panned up because it, it, it hurts the fighters. Yeah. Uh, do you think that uh, they do have enough room on the roster uh, uh, for the UFC and Strike Force guys? Because they're running more and more events now, and it seems to be the complaint of you know a lot of the casual fans is that there's too many events. So I have a hard time believing, I guess, that there's not room on some of these events for, for fighters as accomplished as someone as yourself. Yeah, I, I, I don't know the number of events, but if you're merging, merging in a, a huge company like Strike, Strike Force, there's obviously going to be too many fighters on the roster. Mm -hmm. So why do you think they bought Strike Force then, just to get rid of the competition? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're kind of like the bully right now. They're trying to bully all the competition. All they can't really bully uh, Bellator all because Bellator's got a good relationship with Spike TV and uh, MTV. Well, they can't bully them guys out. No, they've got that Viacom money behind them. They, they've got uh, quite the media conglomerate behind them. Uh, did you consider signing with Bellator uh, before you made your World Series deal? Yeah, I called them up and I got the runaround. I'm not. I'm not a fan of Bellator at all. They, the first time they, I, I actually fought for them, never got very good treatment. And the second time, I, I kind of got the runaround. So I, I, I'm not in a Bellator at all. Really? Now that's interesting because uh, uh, John Fitch, another World Series uh, uh, signee, said that uh, Bellator, you know, uh, you know, uh, kind of offered him something and then said in the press that they didn't. So, do you think it's the, a real kind of uh, who's running the show kind of uh, situation at Bellator right now, just from what you've experienced? I don't know what that means. What do you mean by who's running the show kind of situation? Well, I mean, there's some people who are saying that it's still Bjorn. Bjorn's in charge. There's some people saying that the Viacom execs are making all the decisions now. Uh, you know, is, is there a question of, uh, you know, too many cooks and uh, not enough, uh, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen, I guess? <laughs> I have no idea why. I I'm not sure what their situation is, but from my experience, it seems like they're just unorganized. They don't have the organization they should, especially yeah. after how long they've been open now for five six years now yeah yeah and one of the things you singled out uh, in your complaints against the ufc was their health coverage and obviously this is something you know a bit about uh i remember a couple of years ago everyone was saying how great it was that ufc was offering insurance to their fighters but uh, you feel it's not a good plan uh, do you think that uh, the ufc offering the insurance in the first place is more of a pr move than anything else yeah of course it is it's, it's catastrophic health care in coverage that's it it's a fifteen hundred dollar deductible Per injury, that doesn't cover very much. That that only covers that only covers major like surgeries in the knee or the shoulder. That's not going to cover your blood test that you need or the MRI you need for for, for the fights. I bet you five percent of the fighters have only used that that insurance, if, if that. So why do you think that the UFC wouldn't cover things like the blood testing? Like clearly that they've got deep enough pockets to do stuff like that. Why would they if they don't have to? If the fighters aren't asking for it, why are they going to pay for it? That's why I'm trying to start this fighters association. Mm -hmm. I'll try to get it going at least. Like John Fitz tried to get it going one time, but he got kicked. They can't him after the GSP fight when he tried to get it going. Mm -hmm. Other fighters have been trying to get it going, but we'll see. I got some different, different, a different avenue I'm going to go by about getting this thing going. So that this is becoming an actual priority for you. This is something that you know you're not just talking about it. You actually uh, want to get behind it and see it happen as as uh, well as you can. Yes, yeah. I'm gonna try and get a hold of the NFL Players Association, some of the reps, 
and then to see if, see what I need to do to get it started. Obviously, it's going to cost a lot of money, but hopefully, maybe there's some kind of a something out there that that can help me get it going. That it's not going to cost too much. Now, just not all the UFC fighters' names and numbers. Yeah. Not much else, I can contact them to get get information from them if I need to. Yeah, just to play, you know, devil's advocate here, do you think uh, a union is a practical possibility in an individual sport like MMA? I um, mean, it doesn't exist in boxing. Uh, I think it'd be a tough sell for your Anderson Silvas, your GSPs, uh, your John Jones of the world who are at the top and making the great money. It, it may be a hard sell to them to, you know, uh, cut back on their earnings uh, to help out the guys at the lower end of the card. I don't think it's going to cut back on their earnings. Why, why would you think it would cut back on their earnings? And to sell it to them, it should be pretty easy because it's going to affect their teammates, it's going to affect their coaches. Because let's look at the teammates that they have. Their teammates, are some of them are fighting the UFC, and they're they're struggling right now probably to try and make ends meet, and they probably have to have another job. Now, if they had more teammates, it'd be easier to train. They'd have the teammates that could, they could pay the coaches better. They wouldn't have to worry about payments for the, the teammates. Yeah. Makes sense? So it'd be easy to sell it to the GSPs, the Joneses, because it's their teammates that it's affected. Yeah, that's a good point as well. It really seems like the guys who are at the, the lower level of the UFC are just kind of you know scraping by in a lot of instances. And to me, that doesn't seem right when you're competing for a billion-dollar company on the absolute largest MMA stage in the world. That just doesn't compute for me at all. Right, I'm, I'm with you. And you said that it's not like it's not like NFL. I think it is just like NFL. How so? NFL, we're, we're, we're individuals in the same, but we're uh, independent contractors. The NFL players, they're all independent contractors. It's all the same. 